Yo, what's good, YouTube? Sam Crow here, aka Scoop, back with the International Draft Master Season 3, Week Number 6, and we're taking on the Shamrock Snowbers, coached by I'm Pledge. So, one of my good buddies, we've had, we created a rivalry, uh, rivalry way back when in the UAL Season 1. And we faced in that season, we faced in the UAL season two, we faced in the IDM seasons one and two. And yeah, so here we are again in season three of the IDM. Except this thing, something's a little bit different. <laughs> Pledge is five and zero with a, uh, with a plus 12 differential. So he's undefeated and he's got a scary ass squad. He's playing phenomenally and he's got a scary team. And that's just a, that's a terrible, terrible, terrifying, Combination. So he's got Mega Gallade, Hydreigon, Tapufini, Greninja, Mammal Swan, Bronzong, Amoongus, Licky Licky, Thunderous Therian, Marowak, um, Alolan Form, and the Yen Mega. Our team hasn't changed any. We've got uh, Landers Therian, Zara Aura, Como O, Necrozma, Scizor, Primarina, Incineroar, Decidueye, Glaceon, Mega Diancie, Tauros, and the Garbodor. Um, our Z-Move users are Landers Therian, Incineroar, and Glaceon. His Z-Move users are Thunderous Therian and Yen Mega. So yeah, scary squad on both sides in my opinion. And we built a pretty tough squad to you know take him on with. Hopefully it can work out in our favor. But let's talk about his squad a little bit. So Mega Galate's the best Mega in the format. It's very, very scary. It can bulk up. It can swords dance. It's got incredible speed sitting at 350. It's got incredible attack at base 165, I believe. It gets close combat. Zen headbutt, psycho cut, knockoff, ice punch, fire punch, thunder punch, um, drain punch, bulk. Uh, I think I said bulk up already. It gets um, wish and protect, will o wisp, all kinds of cool things Galade gets. And. Uh, it's speed and attack make it to where you can run like a jolly max attack uh, to speed tie with Mega Diancy and it's uh, bulk allows it and it's attack stat allows it to be non-invested and still two hit KO most of uh, most of a lot of Pokemon like it can two hit KO my Lander Starian with Ice Punch it can Oko or two hit KO um, Zara Aura Oko's Como O can knock out Scizor and Primarina. Uh, not, it actually goes ham on my squad outside of Necrozma, which can take a knockoff or a X Scissor, respectively, even maybe after a Swords Dance. But yeah, don't really have the best switch into that. Um, Hydreigon's another Pokemon that, if it's like Life Orb or Specs, it's really, really hard to switch into. Greninja, Mammal Swine. Thunder Therian and Yen Mega, like he just got, he has so many threats and it's supported really well by things like Tapu Fini, Bronzong, Licky Licky, and Amoongus. So it's going to be really, really hard to break his squad, but we'll go ahead and hop into the team builder. So first up we got Lander Therian with Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, Knockoff, and Explosion. This thing, uh, he has like, okay, he's got his, okay, his best, like, uh, <laughs> I was I keep seeing different things. Uh, first of all, Yen Mega, Thunderous Therian, potentially Bronzong, and Hydreigon could be immune to Earthquake. All get hit by Earthquake, or all get hit by Knockoff uh, for neutral damage, except for Hydreigon and maybe Yen Mega resist Dark. I don't know for sure, um, but any anyhow. Explosion is a one-time move, so whatever comes in on the knockoff is going to get exploded. Or I'm going to go boom on it. I've got the Yachi Berry so that I can take an Ice Shard or an Icicle Crash, depending, uh, from Mammal Swine. can potentially um, pivot around my Intimidates to put myself in a position to take an Ice Shard if I need to. Um, Stealth Rock gets chip damage on literally everything on his team. And it's just really nice overall. Um, outside of that, though, Earthquake does decent damage to Gallade, Tapu Fini, Greninja, Mammal Swine, um, Bronzong if it's not Levitate, Amoongus, Licky Licky, and the Alolan Marowak. And Stealth Rock helps a lot out versus like uh, Yen Mega, Alolan Marowak, Thunderous Therian, um, and and it helps put things like Gallade in range of uh, Necrozma puts. Um, 
Tapu Fini closer to being in range of one shotted by um, Thunderfuck and so on and so forth. His team's really scary. Lander Therian didn't make like all that much sense in this matchup. He's got Glade, which can outpace and revenge kill me with Ice Punch. He's got um, Hydreigon, which could outpace and drop a Draco on me, knock me out. Top of Feeny can hit me up with the Ice Beam or the Surf and knock me out. Greninja Surf or Ice Beam knocks me out. Memo Swan, Icicle Crasher, Ice Shark could potentially knock me out. He could be packing the Icicle Spear. Um, Bronzong can't do much to it except get rid of its item and it's potentially going to be a Cobra Berry anyway. Um, maybe a heat proof Cobra Berry variant. Um, sounds good versus Incineroar and looks really well versus Mega Diancie. And then uh, uh, Thunder Stain could revenge kill me with Hidden Power Ice and yeah, maybe could knock me out with Hidden Power Ice as well. So yeah, lots of scary threats there. And Landers didn't make the most sense, but I needed a rocker in this match and I couldn't fit it on um, <laughs> Necrozma or Mega Diancie because of their specific roles in this matchup. So this is what I'm left with. Max HP, max defense so that I can just better take hits on the physically defensive side from things like Marowak, Bronzong, Mammal Swine, and Mega Glade. And can shuffle, can intimidate shuffle with uh, Landers and Incineroar to make, you know, Mega Glade and maybe Mammal Swine, and even the Lola Marowak, not as big of threats as they are. But yeah, that's going to be it for Landers, and we can go ahead and hop into Zara Aura. Okay, next up we've got Zara Aura. Plasma Fist, Close Combat, Knock Off, Fire Punch. Basically four attacks with Life Orb and enough speed to outpace Mega Gallade. We set it at 351 speed with an Adamant Nature max attack and quite a bit of HP investment thanks to our speed tier. We're able to uh, abuse uh, Life Orb for attacks here. He doesn't have the best switch into this outside of Amoongus, and it needs to be like physically defensive, not no, uh, not any Assault Vest variant or anything like that. Um, Plasma Fist will 2-hit KO Glade. Plasma Fist into close combat, knocks out Hydreigon. Um, Plasma Fist either 2-hit KOs or Oko's Top of Fini and Greninja. Mammal Swine is dropped by close combat after Stealth Rocks unless it's max HP, max defense. Bronzong does not come in on Plasma Fist and knock off. Or if uh, if I suspect Cobra Berry, then double Plasma Fist, especially if I expect double, uh, I mean, excuse me, Cobra Berry and Heat Proof, definitely double Plasma Fist. Amoongus doesn't appreciate knock off into Fire Punch or Fire Punch into Fire Punch. Losing its item is detrimental. Licky Licky does not like Plasma Fist into close combat. Thunderous Therian does not like knockoff into Fire Punch. Obviously, it gets uh, Bolt Absorbed, so I cannot Plasma Fist that thing. I also get Bolt Absorbed, so it cannot Bolt Switch on me or anything like that. And Alola Marowak, if it is Lightning Rod, it does not take close combat. I mean, it does not take knockoff. Um, however, if it is not, then knockoff into Plasma Fist or two Plasma Fists will knock it out. So uh, that's really nice. And Plasma Fist obviously knocks out the Yen Mega. So, that being said, this thing's speed tier, and it's, uh, I guess, you know what? I should have probably speed crept Greninja, to be honest. Speed creep Greninja. Hmm. It's something to discuss. Anyways, that's going to be it for Zara Aura, and we can move on to Necrozma. Alright, so Necrozma is going to be a Cobra Berry variant with Prism Armor, obviously. Swords Dance, Photon Geyser, Knockoff, and Morning Sun. So he has no uh, Psychic Resist outside of Hydreigon and Bronzong. But I felt like my team pressures uh, Hydreigon a whole lot. I actually don't know if Hydreigon will actually even come to this matchup. We have Prim Arena, Mega Diancie, Incineroar, um, and a lot, you know, a few mods that outpace it, a few mods that can. Uh, take advantage of it and so on and so forth. So I don't know if it will actually come. If it does, we can work around it. But uh, otherwise, we can't really hit it with Necrozma all that good. But we are max HP, max defense, meaning we can take a couple hits from Gallade. Uh, also means if he doesn't set up with Gallade, we can set up a Swords Dance, take a hit. We can take the following hit and then knock him out with Photon Geyser 100%. Or we can try to uh, two or three hit KO him with Photon Geyser without the boost. Knock off, uh, Sword Sense into uh, Knock Off on Bronzong will knock it out unless it is uh, Cobra Berry. And then, uh, yeah, it's just really nice to hit really hard versus his team. Max HP, Max Defense allows me to take hits from uh, Mega Gallade, like I mentioned. Mammal Swan also. And I can take um, 
a hit from Marowak thanks to Prism Armor and uh, this investment. So that's really nice. And then just being able to try to break through things like Licky Licky, Bronzong, Amoongus, so on and so forth. Uh, Tabu Fini is another good one to uh, Swords Dance up on and then Photon Gun. If it doesn't have Haze, we should be in a good position. Um, however, Amoongus and Tabu Fini could carry Clear Smog and Haze respectively. But yeah, that's going to be it for uh, Necrozma, and we can move on. Alright, so next up is Prim Arena, and we've got Scald, Moonblast, Ice Beam, and Encore. Leftovers and Torrent ability, respectively, with uh, item and ability, respectively, excuse me. Max HP, Max Pedef, in case he does bring Hydreigon, I do need a solid switch into it, and this is my best switch into it, in my opinion. Um, he can't really make solid predictions on Prim Arena, unless he brings, like, Work Up Thunder Bang or something like that. <laughs> or, like, uh... Or this thing just gets taken out early game and then Hydreigon puts in the work. <laughs> but we do have Encore. I thought about running safety goggles in Encore so that he couldn't put me to sleep with the Moongus and I could Encore him into Spore if that matchup ever happened. That would be really dope. But I felt like Leftovers was better because it allows me to uh, recover just a little bit versus Hydreigon. If it goes for Dark Pulse, if it goes for Draco, come in and take, uh, take the Stealth Rocks, get recovery back. After two turns, um, I'll be back to full. If I just take one round of Stealth Rocks and he goes for Draco and he's locked in, um, I'll be, you know, come in on Stealth Rock, be at 88%, get six back, be at 94, and then he has to switch out and then I, you know, I fire off an attack because I know he has to switch and then I get 6 more percent back but at 100% whatever he switches into probably among us then I can double back out or whatever but uh, yeah the idea is to be able to um, more than likely I can just moonblast something like Greninja I can moonblast Hydreigon moonblast Delayed Scald the Mammal Swine Scald the Bronze Zone Ice Beam the Amoongus. Ice Beam is only there for Amoongus I guess it hits Yen Mega and Thunder Therian harder than Scald and Moonblast and if it's in a position to where you know it's a roll and I need to the Ice Beam to knock it out I will go for Ice Beam but otherwise mostly clicking Scald and Moonblast unless Amoongus is obviously going to be a switch in and then Ice Beam could be a predicted uh, move and then maybe pick up a to a KO depending on you know if it's at full it's obviously not going to knock it out I'm not offensively invested or anything like that but yeah that's it for Primo in it and we can move on to Incineroar right, so here we are with Incineroar and we've got an assault vest variant with intimidate ability we've got the fake out knockoff fire punch and thunder punch does pretty decent versus his team assault vest max attack max uh, HP uh, nothing too specific about this spread just wanted to be able to do some damage while intimidating some Pokemon and having the assault vest to protect my you know defenses fake out lets me get some chip on basically anything uh, obviously won't click that versus Mega Gallade it does have the inner focus ability and would knock me out with a dark type uh, I mean a fighting type attack or to a KO me with a fighting type attack and then knockoff gets rid of items really nice um, fire punch and thunder I can't really hit Hydreigon but like I mentioned I don't think he's gonna bring that and if he does I can you know at least fake it out and then knock its item off and so on and so forth thunder punch is there for the um, Tapu Fini fire punch obviously gonna be able to do the most of Bronzong and Moongus uh, so on and so forth and then knockoff is really nice for the Alola Marowak. I'm pretty solid switch into Alola Marowak as well, as long as it doesn't go immediately for like Boomerang or something like that, which could be problematic. But yeah, it's gonna be it for Incineroar and we can move on. Last but not least, like I mentioned, we've got Mega Niancy with three attacks and the Rock Polish, Moonblast, Power Gem, and the Hidden Power Fire. Max speed, so that we can potentially speed tie with Mega Delayed and outpace everything else that's not Greninja. And we've got uh, a little bit of a weird EV spread this week. We've got enough uh, HP investment and natural defense and special defense stats that we can take a hit from Mega Gallade. We avoid a 2-8 KO from Earth Power from Hydreigon. Um, Top of Fini can't knock us out with uh, Surf. We can't really survive a hit from Greninja, Mammal Swine, or Bronzong. We can take uh, uh, Amoongus. We can take a Giga Drain from Amoongus. Can't uh, like can't survive like a Drywall from Licky Licky or anything like that. But it's not going to be able to knock us out with like Earthquake or Knock Off or anything like that, or like Frustration or anything. Um, Thunder Therian will. I think it still two hit KOs us with Thunderbolt. 
But we can come in on a Lola Marowax Flare Blitz pretty comfortably and then scare it out with Power Gym. We can scare Yen Mega with Power Gym and avoid being, you know, too damaged by Air Slash and Bug Buzz unless it is tinted lenses. If it's if it's speed boost, it's not as scary. If it's tinted lens, it's a pretty big threat to my team as you can see. It just clicks uh bug buzz and claims a kill or a two hit KO. <laughs> Very scary. But uh yeah it's gonna be the squad and we can go ahead and hop into the replay and we'll be right back. Okay so here we are with the replay and my opponent chooses to bring the Yen Mega, Greninja, Tapu Fini, Amoongus, Mamoswine, and the Bronzong. So no Hydreigon, that was pretty much expected. But no Mega Gallade, that's insane. I'm not sure why he didn't bring it. Um yeah, I have no idea why I didn't bring it. Maybe because of my fairy spam and the crossman landers. I'm not really sure though. Um, Mega Gallade's a huge threat, no matter the matchup. Anyways, um, he's got potential for Stealth Rocks on Mammal Swan and Bronzong. He's got potential for Spikes and Toxic Spikes and Greninja. He's got Defog and Tapu Fini, so I don't necessarily think he's going to be a Hazard Stack uh, team because his only removal is, you know, Defog with Tapu Fini and Yen Mega needs removal like it, it thrives off having no rocks on the field and um, <laughs> yeah I think I think that's definitely going to be a, a concern for him if I get stealth rocks up uh, potential leads for him are Bronzong, Mammal Swine, and Greninja uh, in terms of hazard stacking um, in terms of blocking me from getting up hazards um, my two stealth rockers um, that he could deter are Lander Starian and Mega Diancy could deter him with Greninja or Feeny or even Mammal Swine because uh, obviously Mammal Swine is bulky enough to live anyone hit from Landers or Mega Diancy and if it's Sash then it takes a Z move from Landers as well and can threaten us with you know Ice and Earthquakes you know uh, stab respectively so Necrozma looks like it could be one of my better leads and he could lead Greninja or Yen Mega though as well Lots of different things he could lead with. And he's going to lead with the Mammal Swine as we lead with Incineroar. Incineroar was our best lead because we can just fake out anything and then hard swap accordingly. But uh, he does lead with the uh, Mammal Swine here and he threatens us very uh, immediately. But we're going to fake out here and then we're going to go hard in the landers because I know he's not going for an ice type attack. I just knew he wasn't going to go for an ice type attack here on this turn. And we're able to get our landers in pretty comfortably here. And we could double out into Primarine here. But I don't think he's going to go for the Ice type move. And if, even if he does, we have the Yachi Berry. So what we go for here is the Stealth Rocks. He could have been Icicle Spear here as well. It wouldn't have knocked out, I don't think. It would have been close, but I don't think it would have knocked out. And we're able to um, get Rocks up as he gets rid of our item and nothing more. So now we can switch out into Primarina predicting the icicle spear or the ice shard but he doubles out into top of Fini as well not really a double but he switches out into top of Fini as well and just defogs our rocks away as we kill it moonblast we get a critical hit here and this matters because uh, we're going to be able to two hit ko from there otherwise it was like a three or four hit ko uh, top of Fini is that bulky he goes into his bronze on here we go hard into prim uh, incineroar get the intimidate off and knock off his item as he reveals to be Culverberry, but gets up his Stealth Rocks uh, in the meantime. On the following turn, we make a prediction here, and we get the Thunder Punch on the top of Fini, and he survives on 3%. Are you kidding me? Survives on 3%. We can't Morning Sun up here or uh, Swords Dance up here because of Taunt. We are able to knock him off and knock him out there as he revealed to be Kibia Berry. So that's something to keep in mind in case of a potential playoffs rematch. But uh, here he goes for the Bug Buzz. Landorus takes 65%, so that reveals to be Tinted Lens and Specs. Timid or Modest could be either. But uh, yeah, we can just go into Mega Diancy here. Double into our Incineroar, predicting his Bronzong to come out. And we're just going to click the knockoff once again here. Not able to pick up a 2 hit KO with knockoff versus this thing. Very nice Bronzong set versus my team. And here he brings in Mammal Swine. To revenge kill my incineroar. I'm just going to sack off Necrozma here. I don't need it anymore. 
uh, outside of like for Amoongus, but I felt like my team deals with Amoongus pretty well here as long as I keep it center or healthy. I go for the power gym here, forgetting that it's neutral. <laughs> I thought it was super effective for a second, and <laughs> Moonblast would have knocked him out there based on that damage. And I am so upset at myself there. I was uh, Mega Diancy at, you know, above 70% health there, or 76% to be exact. Could have knocked him out with Moonblast and would have been in a really solid position, but uh, fubbed up there. But it's okay. I go into I go into uh, Zero Ori here and I go for the Plasma Fist. I almost clicked uh, Fire Blast, or excuse me, Fire Punch there, but I didn't. But it, had I did it though, from, based on that crit damage there, it would have been a two hit KO and he wouldn't have got the spore off. Since he did get the spore off though, I'm actually gonna stay in and go for another uh, Plasma Fist on that turn. Here, I'm actually gonna go for the uh, Fire Punch again because I needed the knockout. But he brings in the Greninja and goes for the Water Shirk and doesn't knock me out thanks to my HP investment. And he was more than likely faster than me if he sped crept Diancy uh, by more than just one point. Otherwise, it was a speed tie. But uh, yeah, I wake up and I'm able to knock him out with the Plasma Fist and he goes into uh, this Amoongus as I, I'm able to get some Fire Punch damage off and put him in range of Amoongus, I mean Incineroar or Primarina. So here, um, I've got the match in the bag as long as I don't get flinched here, <laughs> but I do get flinched. I could have switched out into Primarina, taken an Air Slash and then taking another air slash and put him in range of fake out plus fire punch but i might not have lived these hits after stealth rocks as you can see i would have been at 11 percent and stealth rocks takes 12 percent so that first air slash could have knocked me out had i decided to preserve in center one but um i didn't because that was my best case of winning was to click knock off or click uh Fire Punch there. I did click Fire Punch, which would have knocked him out unless he has like a little bit of bulk investment. But here, I go into Prim Arena and my play is to click Ice Beam here and I get flinched again. So <laughs> that's kind of game. He will two hit KO me here with this uh, bug uh, Air Slash unless I get an Ice Beam Freeze, which is my play here. Um, I'm going to go for the Ice Beam. And Air Slash is doing 33%, 34%, 33, 34, 33. So I need this thing to do 33 or less on this turn. Because <laughs> if he does 34%, I die. And if he gets a flinch, I'll lose anyway. But Or he can miss here as well. But I was playing off a freeze there, and now I'm playing off a miss. I need him to miss this Ice Beam, or I need him to get a low roll. I mean, excuse me, Air Slash, not Ice Beam. But... He is going to win, and that's going to be, you know, that. Unfortunately, we were not able to bring his streak to an end. I'm very proud of the way we played, though, except for the uh, Power Gym on Mammal Swine. Outside of that, I felt we played very well, put ourselves in a position to win. Um, and, yeah, it just got flinched down. But, yeah, good game to pledge. Good luck the rest of the season, my dude, if you need it. And uh, that's going to be it. Let me know what you thought about the prep and play on both sides of the field. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the good stuff. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.